You know, this stuff is always self-inflicted because I'm so badly organised. Oh, badly doing. We don't have time for that. Yeah. I have to. That's very close to squeaking. There's, there's nothing. <sighs> Here goes. Hello and welcome back to the channel. We only just got back from Lithuania at about 12 o'clock yesterday and I got a warning on my phone about five days ago saying both the Bonneville and the Fiat MOT ran out. I think it's today, literally the day after we get back from Lithuania and I wondered why did I do them both on the same day and then I remembered it's almost this time exactly a year ago that we headed off to Tenerife. So I had to quickly get them ready before we headed off. So that's why they're both on the same day. Uh, it means that I haven't managed to get either of them serviced. I'm borderline if either pass. But the problem is I'm riding off to Cornwall next week and the waiting queues for any type of servicing or maintenance on a motorbike is so long in the UK at the moment. I don't know how long it will take and likewise for a car so they're both booked in for an MOT. I'm off to, to self storage here to see if I can find my legal number plate for the motorbike. Don't know if I'll be able to. I walked past the car yesterday, uh, both the rear tyres bald so I've just desperately went over to get two new rear tyres for the fit yesterday. That's done. Went to try and start the Bonneville yesterday, didn't start. So once I've got the number plate here, I need to rush off to my lockup where the Bonneville is and, and try and start it because the MOT is in one and a half hours. The Bonneville MOT is at 12 o'clock. The Fiat MOT is at two o'clock. I mean, the Fiat, did it start first time? Of course it did, no issue at all. So yeah, fingers crossed. I could be delighted by the end of the day and dancing because both have passed and I've got a bit lucky or I could be in the depths of sorrow with both failing and me trying to get them ready for my trip to Cornwall and a ride with some of my friends because I haven't done that all year. Oh, it's been about two months since I've done it because I've been away so much. So here goes. First things first, I need to see if I can find this number plate. Ooh, I hope that's a good omen for today. I found that surprisingly easily. That's a legal number plate in theory. Well, in theory it is. I, I'll be honest, 50% of the time I just leave my, in theory, a legal number plate on because it's not ridiculously small and I've never had a problem anywhere I've gone with it. But just to be safe, I'll put it on because a friend of mine, his bike recently failed an MOT because his number plate was too small and I just, I don't want to risk it. So this will go back on. Okay, before we head off to the bike, big news from Quadlock. Just yesterday, they came out with a range of mag charging options. So to give you an overview, mag charging is the new way to charge your devices. In essence, what it means is that there's now a magnetic strip around the edge of the center of your phone and a lot of the products now are mag charging compatible. So you attach it with a magnet, which makes it easier. And also it can charge up to 15 watts, which is notably faster. Plus, if you look at the side profile, you'll notice that the case is now noticeably more slimline. What that means in reality, for example, the desktop charging option, which is dual charging, one at the bottom, I can feel the magnet attached there. And watch this, no twist at all, it just places on and also no lever anywhere. So place it on, place it off. And I'll try and show you this when I take the car for an MOT. That's attached to my windscreen in my car. It's brilliant. It makes it hugely easier. I've also gone for one of these as well, sports armband. I may try that on or try that out and wireless charger there. So a lot, a lot of new options. Go and check them out because there are big changes at Quadlock and it's one big step for me for making things 
significantly easier and more pleasant. This is a bit of a game changer, so I can't wait to try this stuff out. Right, Monica, let's pack up the Fiat. I take the tools, take the number plates. We've got half an hour to try and get the bundle started. And here she is, 10 miles or 15 miles, I think, off 192K. And who would have guessed today? A 13-year-old little Italian hatchback is the one reliable thing that you can always count on. It's been parked here exactly in this spot. I need to wash it. It's disgusting, isn't it? Yeah. I think I may need to because there are cobwebs everywhere and this will give <laughs> the impression to the MOT tester that this is a car that has not been loved. Yeah. So I'll see if I can quickly clean it. But for now, it's got a more important job. It needs to take the tools to the Bonneville, which is a mile away in central Ipswich. And then I'll worry about this. I've got an hour's gap, so I think we should have enough time to maybe even give this a clean for MOT. Oh my God, there's a knife in here. Yeah, I know, it's very weird. I, need, I think we need to bin that. Very strange that there's a, a broken knife in here. Right, let's get this wireless charger on to the windscreen. Put it on like that. Click it like that. And first time I've used it. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's good. Yeah, very good. It's good. brilliant, isn't it? Like first things first, yesterday it was about 10 p.m. and I had to take the battery out because it, it wouldn't charge. And because I was so tired, I lost one of the screws. And the only one I could try and put on is this with three washers. Never do stuff when you're tired. So I, I don't even know if this is going to fit. Mm -hmm. I dropped it here somewhere and somehow I spent 30 minutes. I was in a pathetic state yesterday, pathetic <laughs> with how tired I was. And somehow I've managed to lose one of these bolts. I've looked in the, the bike and everything. So I need to see if this even fits on the bike because there's not much tolerance there with the seat. So, I mean, this is the first step. If this doesn't fit, MOT canceled. there all along. Where? Here. I just left it. I oh left it on the... Oh God, never. <laughs> Lesson. Never do anything when you're tired. Never. Oh. Oh, do you know, I was going to film yesterday, but I was in such a pathetic state. I thought, <laughs> no, it's not even worth it. I spent half an hour looking for that, and I just left it on the actual lead itself. Okay. For now, I won't even plug in any SysApp or quad lock. I just need to get this to the mechanic as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. Please start first time. Please, please start first time. <laughs> Bike keys. You lost something again. Got them, got them. You know, this stuff is always self-inflicted because I'm so badly organized, always. There's no need to leave this stuff to the last minute. You know, I should have known the MOTs were coming up. Could easily have got the Bonneville serviced and Fiat just before we left for, t for Lithuania, so I'd have known they would have passed. But now I've given myself no time because Monica's taking the Fiat to the airport, so she needs it. And I'm taking the Bonneville to Cornwall, as I said, so I need that. I, I brought brake pads. Next issue is I bought brake pads because I think they're close to the limit, but I, I've got about 40 minutes to change them. No, please don't. Please don't. I'll just have a look and see if they're below the legal limit. A 
end? Bugger. What? Oh, Pat's need doing. No. We don't have time for that. Yeah. I, I have to. I have to try at least. Positives at the bottom, but there's only one disc, so only two brake pads. Can't can they just service it before the MOT? Didn't book it. They didn't have time. They've got time for MOTs, not servicing. Okay, I've got to do the pads. I had a feeling this may be the case, so I did actually, about two months ago, buy brake pads. And I never got around to fitting them, so perfect opportunity on the morning of an MOT to get it done. Now I've done this before and it's really not too difficult on the Bonneville. I just see, need to see if I can remember how to do it because there's no signal in this car park. So two screws there. on that. I don't know if you can pick that up. That's very close to squeaking. There's, there's nothing, nothing there at all. You can see the actual brake pad. Right. Okay. That should be fairly straightforward. So anyone not familiar with this, that's fairly straightforward. That took about two minutes to take out. I now need to compress these two cylinders, one, two, back in, in that way. And I don't have a proper tool, of course, but you can use a bit of brute force to push them back in, and I do know that. There you go, see that one? <sighs> Going back in, so now you can see this one. Can you see that? This one is in further than this one. Mm -hmm. See, and now I'll just do a bit more. You can just get an angle there, it's all solid metal. Nothing bad's gonna happen. <sighs> there. But that's not the way to do it, is it? It's the cheap way to do it when you don't have proper tools. And what kind of tools oh, do you need for that? It's a good workout as well. Okay, um, there is a proper tool specifically for this exact job. Mm -hmm. now, I've pushed it in. I think I've pushed that in enough now. So both are in. Mm -hmm. Do you like working on your bike? Mm, borderline, borderline, <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I... I don't know. The problem is, I'm so badly organized, usually when I work on my bike, it's exactly in this situation, frantic, desperate, last minute work. So there's, there's very little enjoyment in that because of the situation I put myself in. Okay, so these are the, the brake pads, bam, bam. I mean, it's, it's actually quite boring, but spray the back of them. And what's the spray? That is three in one copper grease. Oh, okay. Spray the back of that and it means that they won't bind or something like that. Mm -hmm. I read it online once. I think it's a good thing to do. Now these, someone will tell me if these are better or worse quality than the others because this is one bit of brake and these are two. My guess is I tried to save money and bought cheaper <laughs> ones. That would be... Sounds like you. Yeah, that would be my obvious guess. Okay, so... How much longer? I'm hoping five minutes. That means about an hour. Yeah, yeah, possibly, possibly. Okay, I need to push these in further. And one hour later. <laughs> done. Not done. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Need the tool. Couldn't compress it enough. Old brakes back on. Old brake pads back on. Now we'll take it to the MOT and assume it fails. Mm -hmm. It's borderline. Maybe I'll get incredibly lucky. Mm -hmm. If I'm not incredibly lucky, uh, it, will, it will fail, of course, uh, and I'll just have to say, please, can you change the brakes? Yeah. <sighs> that's the best idea. Yeah. Damn, last time I could do it. Just with that. Okay, these will go back on. 
Let's get it to the MOT place. That's such a shame. I could push it in 70%, not the whole way. It just shows you need proper tools. I need to buy one of those. Should have done it ages ago. Mm. Okay, I reckon, I think I've got maybe a 10% chance of passing now. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it works. Okay. Brakes back in the car. Monarchy, follow me. Okay. Let's go. I'm a play time. Okay, good luck, Bonnie. Yeah, wish me luck. Monica, I'll, I'll come and walk and meet you back there. Okay, good luck. Here it goes. Right, if it fails, I'll ask the mechanic to keep it and hopefully he'll squeeze in the brakes and I just get them done front and back. And if it passes, I will buy the tool to get the brakes done and do it from eBay, hopefully. Okay. Wish me luck. dropped off at Cox Motorcycles. That's in the center of Ipswich. And honestly, I don't care if the Bonneville passes or fails. I just know that I can trust them. Very, very nice couple of guys in there, extremely friendly. The bike is going on to be MOT'd and checked as we speak, literally immediately. Um, it will be 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, I can come back and I'll get a pass or fail. But it's, it's just really nice when you drop your bike off at uh, a nice bunch of people. So. I highly recommend it. I'll keep you posted. I think we'll go for coffee now. Uh, yeah, let's see what they say. I've had a call from the mechanic. It passed. Just feel incredibly lucky. However, there's a warning from the mechanic. He said it's passed, but there's a significant list of advisories. And for anyone not British, advisories are the things that don't necessarily fail an MOT, the annual check, but they do strongly advise that you get them sorted as soon as possible because they will turn out to be potentially dangerous. So for now I can ride it away, but I'm going to go to the mechanic and see what this list is like and see what they recommend. One down, bike passed, onto the Fiat. Feels amazing. I will put all of Cox Motorcycles and Ipswich details in the written description below because they are two of the nicest guys that you could ever hope to meet. So friendly and it makes, I said earlier, but it makes a massive difference dealing with such nice guys. This is what the situation's like though. It's the 18th of August now. The soonest they could book this in to get any kind of work done other than an MOT, which is the annual check, is the 8th of September. Mm -hmm. It's about 20 days that you'd have to wait. And they said, we'd love to do it sooner. We hate keeping bikers waiting, but they're just that busy at the moment. Okay, things that are needed. Let me see if I can find the list. <laughs> it's a long <sighs> list. Mm, yeah, it's long enough, yeah. So this is what it looks like. Right, rear brake fluid. As soon as possible. Yeah, yeah, so brake fluid reservoir below minimum level on the front, mm -hmm. nail in the front tire, brake pads close to the limits on the front, <laughs> foot rests loose, brake pads close to minimum limit on the rear, drive chain slightly loose, either the chain is loose, near side front foot rest rubber slightly damaged. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, is that I'm off to Cornwall in about five or six days. I cannot miss any biking season because I don't want to. So I'm going to have to buy a tool to push those pistons back into the brakes and fix it myself. Because I need this bike ready in about two days time. So I'll get that sorted. We've now got another problem, a warning light we've just noticed, and there's a brake light out on the Fiat. So <laughs> we're back at the storage mark. We need to see if we've got a bulb, put the bulb in here, drive the Fiat off and hopefully this will pass the test. But the Bonneville, 
Well done, Bonavo. Goodbye. Well done, well done. Actually, relatively very inexpensive. Just brake pads, the rest is just maintenance. What, what do you think about Fiat? Will it pass? Okay. Um, it's needed an exhaust for about two years, maybe three years. It's been an advisory <laughs> for three years now. Uh, I changed the tyres yesterday. The brakes should be fine because we did those recently in Tenerife. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it will pass. Okay. It always seems to pass fairly inexpensively, <laughs> and this car never lets us down. Okay. Fingers Here it goes. Crossed. Okay, I'll run back to storage, get the keys. Let's see if we've got a bulb. This is one of the reasons I love the Fiat. Everything is so simple. Changing a bulb, for example. Nothing LED, just a simple bulb, and everything could not be easier to fit back in. A bulb change takes about 40 seconds or so. I was at a mechanics yesterday getting the, the tires done on, on the Fiat. And the mechanic said to me, this is the dream car that they love getting because if they earn about 30 pounds profit per changing one tire, that's about the standard going rate for a mechanic to change a tire. The problem is, if they have Porsches and Range Rovers come in, which of course are extremely popular, relatively speaking, they, they get the same amount of profit margins from doing those Range Rovers and Porsches, but the problem is it takes them about twice the length of time because they have to be so careful doing it. Because of course, if they scratch any of the alloys or, or damage anything in any way, the owners are much, much more on the ball with these luxury cars. And if there's anything, any tiny scratch on the alloys, the, the owners will pick them up for these cars. So it takes them twice as long to do. And there's always that fear that they could damage an owner of a luxury vehicle's car. So they do slightly dread it, which I found quite eye-opening. So that's it. Easy as that. New bulb in. MOT time. Past. <laughs> Amazing. I cannot believe. Let me. I'll drive out and pull over. I cannot believe both vehicles have passed. Okay. I haven't looked at this yet. That was just to give you an idea. That was forty-five pounds for the Fiat MOT and thirty pounds for the Bonneville. Right. Okay. Well, first of all... Mileage history of that. Yeah, yeah, I know it shows for everyone. However, uh -huh. I can't see if there are any... No faults. Surely. Hmm. I'll have to check online, but nothing obvious there or... There or there. Very interesting. Usually they'll have a... No hmm. faults. Yeah. Well, usually they'd have a, a thing saying the, the potential faults, but that looks incredibly all good. So we now have two vehicles that are completely in roadworthy condition. I'm now going to drive over to Screwfix, which is about a mile away, and I'm going to pick up, I hope it's right, a brake piston compressor tool because I need the Bonneville back on the road properly as quickly as possible, as possible. So I'm going to get one of those. It's 13 pounds. I've never tried one. And the reason I want to get it right now is because it says it's for cars. I don't know if it's going to be good for bikes, but it's cheap. It's worth a go. And if it works, I want to quickly show you this to end the video, just so you know if it works. And I can put a link to, to the exact tool that I'll pick up. So let's see if this works, but that feels Beyond amazing, having two vehicles that are in good condition, uh, good condition, legally roadworthy. I feel like I've won the lottery. Right, slight change of plan. I have bought for five pounds these from Screwfix. These are just very, very simple clamps, not motorcycle specific. And I think they will do the exact job that one of the specialist tools for cars or motorbikes will do, and it's just five pounds. 
I hope this is going to be a good tip if people want to try and work on this yourself because changing brakes on a motorbike is relatively very simple. Plus, with everything going on in the world, it's good if we can save a bit of money and the huge waiting times for any kind of motorbike mechanics, specifically in the UK, means that this may be a good option to, to save yourself a little bit of time and some money as well. So I'm going to take off the, the brake calipers and see if this works. Monica's gone out, so I'm going to try and film this as much as I can solo. Here we go, moment of truth, to see if I can compress these brake cylinders enough. So, put that across there like that, and I will need I need this. Well, it works perfectly. Clamp that on to the caliper. Have a brake pad in there so you can apply all the pressure and you don't damage anything. And just keep on turning. And you can see the caliper going down and down into its, into its socket. And that is already Done. I'll now take it off to show you what it looks like. So, I'll grab the camera. That, that is now two of the pistons nicely back in their sockets. And that will give me enough room now to put the brakes, uh, to put the brand new brake pads in. You know, it's amazing the difference it makes having the right tools. That took me 30 minutes of trying to just do it by hand this morning, unsuccessfully. And then I get a correct tool for the job and it is the easiest job in the world. That's front brakes changed. I think that was about six minutes. Just spend a little bit of money and get the right tools. And actually, maintenance is quite fun. I got lucky today, incredibly lucky, to have both of them passing the MOTs after being just so atrociously badly organized. I'm, I'm very, very lucky. With the Bonneville, the front brake's done, of course. Rear brakes I'll do tomorrow. Chain, tighten, foot levers tighten. Get everything ready because next week I'm planning a big trip down to Cornwall to see my parents for a few nights. I'll also explore the local area and find a couple of cool biker hangouts, hopefully. That should be possibly over a 500 mile round trip. And to squeeze that in before the summer's over, it feels oh, just excitement levels building. I cannot wait for that. And the Fiat, of course. Well, it's, it's so reliable, it's almost boring. And who would have guessed it? You know, to get that absolute reliability, the trustworthiness, the longevity, a little Italian car like that. Fantastic. Almost can't pick which one I like more. And I'll leave it there. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. It feels really fantastic. Really, really brilliant to be back in England. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.